Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Susan Mahdi Daraj. I'm honored to be one of the uh, members of the Organizing Committee of Palestine Rights, and I hope that you have enjoyed your time in the festival so far. We have one more full day of programming to go, and it's just been a really jam-packed and wonderful um, festival program so far. And we continue that today with our program. I'm going to introduce our speaker in just a minute. But um, a reminder that uh, um, Dr. Nasser is going to speak for um, for a little while, and then we're going to have an opportunity to ask questions. So if you have questions or comments, you can post them in the chat or in the Q&A. There's a Q&A button at the bottom. Um, and if you want to ask your question directly to Dr. Nasser or talk to her directly, there is a button, I believe, that where you can raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, um, the, uh, the, the technology team will allow you to put your camera on and ask your question directly if you would like to do it that way as well. So you can ask questions in two ways. And if you are um, planning to post about any events um, at Palestine Right, such as this session or any other session, please add the hashtag Palestine Rights. So it's hashtag Palestine Rights to all your social media handles when you are posting about the festival. So once again, welcome. We're thrilled that you're here. If you let us know in the chat where you're from, we would love to know that. And it's my honor to introduce um, Dr. Nasser. Dr. Arwa Abdul Haq Nasser is an academic pediatrician in Omaha, Nebraska. She's a researcher of child development and family influence on children's health. And she's published many scientific papers on childhood behavioral health and early literacy. She's also the co-editor of a textbook on the psychosocial aspects of health in Arab populations. Dr. Nasser believes in the critical role of reading to children in promoting literacy and in enhancing emotional, cognitive, and language skills. She is motivated to write Arabic children's books by her love and appreciation of the beauty of the Arabic language and her desire to be instrumental in bringing this language to children at a young age. She has written and published eight children's books. Welcome, Dr. Nasser. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The stage is yours. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thank you for inviting me uh, to this wonderful event. I am really honored to be among this group of authors and activists for Palestine. Thank you for the organizing committee for their successful efforts in putting out such a beautiful and well-organized event. Um, and thank you specifically for Dr. Palum Bolu and Susan Daraj and Jacqueline and others who have communicated with me directly. I'm going to switch to Arabic now. Um, uh, some of the uh, slides that I have that talks about reading for children and about my research uh, is going to be in both Arabic and English. Uh, but I will be happy to um, uh, answer any questions about the content of what I say in either language in, uh, in the question and answer session. Masail Khair. شكراً لحضوركم والاستضافة في هذا الحفل الرائع أنا فخورة جداً بأن أكون ضمن هذا الجمع الأدب العريق شكراً لمنظمي هذا الاحتفال لجهودهم الناجحة في تنظيم هذا الحفل ولمن تواصلوا معي من هيئة المؤتمر أود أولاً أن أعرفكم بنفسي وكما يعرف أي فلسطيني أن تعرف بنفسك هو أن تحكي قصة حياتك uh, I'll be brief though أنا طبيبة أطفال من أصل فلسطيني ولكني ولدت في الأردن وحاليا أمارس طب الأطفال وأدرس في كلية الطب في جامعة نبراسكا للعلوم الطبية والدي وأجدادي يأتون من قرية من قضاء نابلس اسمها دارستيا So I'm going to start my screen share and um, I have some slides that I would like to share with you Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Thank you. So Deristia تقع في في وسط فلسطين في منطقة مرتفعة وهي مغطاة بأشجار الزيتون. 
There is Tia Kamaya Dulil Isam. There means monastery. Wahia Belda Lil Kiddis Awulwali Istia. Istia in Arabic is thought to be Saint Isaiah in English. And it is thought, Yortakad uh, Anna uh, Saint Isaiah Awulwali Istia, Wallahi Kanam in Hawariyin Sayyid al Messiah. هرب من الاضطهاد وانتهى به الأمر في هذا المكان قبل أن يقتل وقبره موجود في قرية ديرستيا بجانب الجامع Curiously enough هذه صورة بيت جدي في ديرستيا وهو الآن مغلق وفارق وفارغ بعد أن توفي جدي وجدتي وهذا سيدي أبو كايد كان يملك عدة دنومات من أشجار الزيتون ويعيش من إنتاج الزيت والزيتون ومنتجاته الشخص في منتصف الصف الأول الجالس هو والدي الدكتور كايد عبد الحق أكمل التوجيهية في مدرسة الصلاحية الداخلية في نابلس وتخرج في سنة 48 مع آخر فوج توجيهي تخرجوا في قبل النك قبل نكبة الثمانية وأربعين في بريتش مانديت بالستان. أكمل دراسته في مصر ولندن وأمريكا وتخرج بدكتوراه في التربية والتعليم ورجع بعد سنوات إلى البلاد ليكون أول رئيس لجامعة النجاح الوطنية في نابلس. والدتي التي تلقي الخطاب في هذه الصورة. هي كانت مديرة مدرسة الزرقاء الثانوية للبنات في الستينات والسبعينات وهذا صف التخريج عائلتها من قرية من قرى نابلس اسمها بيت إمرين الوالد والوالدة كانوا من عشاق اللغة العربية أبداً أدباً وشعراً ونثراً وكان الوالد يتكلم الفصحى دائماً وهو كاتب وشاعر انتقل لنا حب اللغة العربية كجزء من الإرث العائلي سأنتقل الآن للحديث قليلاً على عن أهمية القراءة للأطفال من الناحية العلمية والطبية تثبت الدراسات العلمية الحديثة ما عرفه الناس بديهياً منذ بداية الحضارات أن للبيئة المنزلية والثقافية التي يعيش فيها الطفل تأثير كبير على تطوره العقلي والانفعالي ولاحقاً على تحصيله الأكاديمي ونجاحه بشكل عام في الحياة في دراسات أخرى تثبت أن توفر الكتب في المنزل له دور مستقل في تنمية القدرات اللغوية عند الأطفال وجود الكتب في المنزل لها قيمة أكثر من على سبيل المثال أن نستعير كتب من المكتبة وجود الكتب في البيت يؤثر إيجابياً على تنمية القدرات اللغوية عند الأطفال هذه كانت دراسة نشرت مؤخراً على في من 31 دولة أثبتت هذه هذه الحقيقة القراءة للأطفال بانتظام منذ الصغر تعزز التطور العقلي وتقوي العلاقة بين الأهل والأطفال وتلعب دوراً مهماً في تنمية القدرات اللغوية وليس فقط القدرات اللغوية بل القدرات الانفعالية والاجتماعية عند الأطفال ويستمر تأثيرها الإيجابي مدى الحياة كل هذه الحقائق أثبتت علميا بدراسات عديدة في خلال السنوات العشرة أو الخمسة عشر الفائتة ودراسات تأتي يوميا تثبت هذه الحقائق في أهمية للسنوات الأولى تتميز بالنمو والتطور السريع للدماغ والقدرات العقلية والانفعالية للطفل بينما يبدأ الطفل بالكلام في بداية السنة الثانية إلا أن اكتساب اللغة يبدأ في الشهور الأولى ولذلك فإن توفير الفرص للتفاعل اللغوي من خلال المحادثة والقراءة يبني المهارات الأولية والأساسية التي تبنى عليها المهارات اللغوية لاحقاً هناك أيضاً دراسات عديدة عن فوائد القراءة المشتركة 
فمثلا مستوى اللغة التي يتحدث بها ويتواصل بها الأهل للأطفال خلال قراءة الكتب من مفردات وصياغة وقواعد هي أعلى من مستوى اللغة المستعملة في الحديث اليومي هذا بدوره يغذي لغة الطفل ويعمق فهمه واستيعابه للغة ويوفر أساسات قوية لتعلم اللغة لاحقا في المدرسة بناء على ذلك فإن القراءة للأطفال تعتبر عاملا مهما في تطور الأطفال وأهميتها تضاهي العناية الطبية في دعم صحة وتطور الأطفال ويعتبر توفير هذه المعلومات للآباء والأمهات من أهم أهداف العناية الطبية التي يتلقاها الأطفال لدى الأطباء في هذه الفترة سأنتقل هنا للحديث قليلاً عن أدب الأطفال كظاهرة أدب الأطفال هو ظاهرة حديثة إلى حد ما في المجتمع حتى في حتى في المجتمعات الغربية يعني بس خمسين خمسة وسبعين سنة اعتمد أدب الأطفال في الوطن العربي في السابق على الترجمة من الكتب الأجنبية ليس فقط لغوياً ولكن أيضاً موضوعيا وثقافيا وحضاريا في هاي الكتب اللي اللي بلاقيها الواحد مرات ب... للاطفال ولكن في العشرين سنه الماضيه تقريبا شهدنا نهضه قويه لادب الاطفال في الوطن العربي بحيث نرى الان قصصا وادبا للاطفال يعكس الحضاره والثقافه العربيه ويعالج المواضيع المهمه لمجتمعنا بلغة أصلية فصيحة سليمة لا تعتمد على الترجمة ونسخ الأفكار والمواضيع الأجنبية وشهدنا أيضا تطور عدد عديد من من دور النشر المتخصصة بالأطفال مثالا على ذلك دار السلوى باي ار اون تغريد النجار كما وضح هذا المؤتمر بمشتركيه وفعالياته فإن الأدب جزء لا يتجزأ من الحضارة والثقافة للشعب الفلسطيني كما هو لكل شعوب العالم أدب الأطفال يحتل مركزاً أساسياً في هذه الثقافة ولذلك فإن تنمية أدب الأطفال الذي يعكس جمال وعبقرية اللغة العربية والثقافة والتراث العربي والفلسطيني هو مهمة أساسية وجوهرية في تنمية جيل مثقف واعي وللحفاظ على الهوية الحضارية الفلسطينية في السنوات القليلة الماضية نشرت ستة كتب ضمن سلسلة نقرأ معا هذه الكتب موجهة إلى الفئة العمرية المبكرة ما قبل المدرسة وتهدف إلى توفير كتب باللغة الفصحى للقراءة المشتركة المبكرة تتميز هذه الكتب بأنها مكتوبة بلغة عربية فصحى سليمة وكلمات مألوفة ونص قصير وصور جذابة ومناسبة تتميز أيضا بأنها مكتوبة بقافية شعرية مما يجعلها جذابة للأطفال وأيضا للأهل الذين يستمتعون بالشعر ويقدرون جمال اللغة العربية تعالج هذه الكتب مواضيع مألوفة للطفل ومن صلب حضارتنا وثقافتنا العربية سأقرأ لكم الآن كتابين من هذه السلسلة الكتب في هذه السلسلة متوفرة من palestinefishing.com وأيضا على amazon.com الكتاب الأول بعنوان زيارة الطبيب داء إلى الأطفال وعائلاتهم في كل مكان هذا الكتاب مكتوب باللغة العربية والإنجليزية Bilingual Book صحوت في الصباح سعالي كالنباح في جسمي حرارة وفي فمي مرارة شهيتي خفيفة وطاقتي ضعيفة وفي رأسي صداع لا شيء مستطاع ذهبت إلى الطبيبة مع أم الحبيبة فحصتني بعناية وقالت بدراية جرثومة بغيضة جعلتك مريضة وصفت لي الدواء ودعت لي بالشفاء ثم أوصت بالوقاية فهي خير من علاج 
وهي أوفر وهي أحكم وللصحة أفضل منهاج اغسل يديك قبل الأكل وقبل تحضير الطعام وإذا سعلت وإن عطست فغطي أنفك باهتمام وإذا مرضت فلا تخالط غير نفسك من أنام حتى تصح وتستريح ويعتدل منك القوام وإذا نصحتك الطبيبة بمطاعيم الوقاية أسرع وخذها بلا تواني فهي من مرض حماية وخزة صغيرة من إبرة التطعيم خير ألف مرة من مرض سقيم النهاية الكتاب الآخر الذي أود أن أقرأه لكم هو كتاب بعنوان مولودنا الجديد إهداء إلى أطفال اللغة العربية وعائلاتهم وهي في رسالة للآباء والأمهات أن القراءة للأطفال تنمي القدرات اللغوية للطفل وتعزز العلاقات الإيجابية بين الأطفال والأهل ولها تأثير إيجابي دائم على التطور العقلي والانفعالي للطفل في بيتنا العتيد مولود جديد ابن لوالدي ولجدتي حفيد ولي أخ صغير والكل به سعيد ينام في هناء في مهده رغيد يبكي إذا يجوع وبكاؤه يزيد ويردع الحليب ومنه يستفيد إذا رآني مقبلا تبسم من بعيد أنتظر حتى يكبر بعمره المديد لنلعب سويا كما هو يريد أقرأ له كتابا وهو بعدي يعيد نذهب معا للمدرسة ودروسنا نجيد نحبه كثيرا مولودنا الجديد كما ذكرت الكتب متوفرة في uh, palestinepublishing.com uh, and I don't know if I'm even allowed to do this, but I am giving a discount with a discount code of Palestine rights uh, for 40% for all of these books. And I'm going to stop here and um, see if anybody has any questions or um, any discussion to be had. Susan? Dr. Dr. Nasser, I uh, just put that discount code and the website. I already put the website in the chat, so I'm putting the discount code. You said it's Palestine Rights. Yep. I hope that's okay that I use that. It's wonderful. Yeah. Th thank you very much. Yes. What a wonderful um, gift for, the, for our attendees. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Nasser or any comments? If you'd like to um, ask directly, you can ask, you can have your hand raised. Um, or you can just put your question in the chat or the Q&A. I have some questions if we don't have some questions popping up 
right away. One of my questions, Dr. Nasser, was, and I, I know we only have a few minutes left, time flies, but um, what are some ways that um, you can encourage children to read when they get a little bit older? So, for example, uh, children often stop reading, or maybe boys stop reading when they're like in middle school. Um, what are some ways that you can encourage reading even past the elementary school age? Yes. Very, very good question. Uh, yes, things take away uh, other activities, usually at that age, especially outdoor activities for boys. Um, I think two things uh, that come to mind is that um, having a protected sacred reading time, uh, which usually happens uh, around uh, naturally occurring um, periods of the day when, uh, when there's quiet time. So for example, before bedtime, is a, a very, very good time to, to read books. Now, um, uh, children, as they grow older, they wanna go to bed later. Uh, so it, we could do that by having them, uh, by delaying the lights off time, but then they still have to be in bed a certain time. And then what else can they do in bed other than reading books? So that would be one thing. The other uh, really important activity is to, to bring, uh, to, to allow them to have and read material that they're interested in. So studies show that really the content is not all that important uh, until that reading habit gets established and until this becomes part of the child's repertoire for seeking knowledge and information. So if a child, for example, is interested in sports, they can, they can read sports books, sports magazines, um, uh, books about sports legends and so on and so forth. Somebody who's interested in, mu in music can also read music literature and, and so on and so forth. Uh, some kids are naturally inclined to like, you know, science and literature and that's all beautiful if that happens, but, uh, but allowing them a little bit of leeway, even reading the newspaper. One other activity that I find really is helpful uh, for children, especially if the child is really um, struggling a little bit with reading, is uh, to have a built-in reading aloud time. So for example, um, usually the reading with children happens at bedtime where the parent reads or maybe the parent and child take, take time uh, or take turn uh, reading uh, to a younger child maybe even. Uh, but one thing that can be helpful is, for example, having uh, the family, like before dinner time, have one of the children read uh, a news article from the newspaper, something had that happened in town. Um, turning off the television and limiting screen time would probably be one of the most important things. And this is something that is, you know, an uphill battle for parents, but if they keep you know, hold their ground and make sure that uh, there are rules as far as um, not having screen screens uh, take over um, their lives, both adult and children, that could be helpful in, um, in maintaining the focus. And, you know, kids who uh, uh, read through elementary school uh, generally become good readers and um, uh, and that is also critical in continuing to read. Uh, many of the kids who say they don't like read to read um, probably have difficulty reading. Uh, either their reading skills have not built up to, um, to their grade level or kept up with their grade level or for some other reason. Um, so those kids who really resist very much to read, it could be that they might need um, help in uh, getting their reading skills up to standard. Thank you. Um, and in terms of your own writing, um, where do you find uh, the inspiration for your stories? I mean, do you, it seems like you have, obviously, you, you know, you rely on your medical background and knowledge for some of the, for some of the plots and information, but where do you generally, um, find your, what is your writing process and where do you find your inspiration? Um, so I am with children all day long uh, as right. part of my <laughs> profession and career. And I have three kids uh, of my own who's now older, but um, 
Um, and I love children's books. So when I, when we go to uh, the bookstore, I go hit the children's book section first and look. Uh, and I, I read extensively both Arabic and English literature. And I, um, uh, um, you know, see what's out there. Uh, sometimes there are actually um, uh, some, some of the books that I have uh, are uh, inspired by the Palestinian culture. Those are uh, still, I'm working on getting them illustrated, but I have several books uh, that, that celebrate um, uh, the beauty of the Palestinian culture in many different ways. And some of them also are inspired by, um, you know, um, events and, and people that I meet in my life. Um, uh, for example, uh, writing, um, I have one other book that I'm writing about a medical condition too that uh, I uh, felt the need to write. Um, I do see as part of my practice, um, not a huge number, but a lot of um, Syrian refugees um, who come to see me because I speak Arabic. And uh, sometimes I uh, feel I have to just do write something for them uh, to uh, uh, you know, to explain a certain theme or, or to talk about their experience. So um, those are all the places where I get inspiration and just sit and sometimes um, the words start kind of lining and, and making rhyme and, um, uh, and they become a book. And, uh, and your illustrations, do you, do you carefully, um, direct the illustrations or do you allow your illustrators to read the manuscript and then generate their own ideas? How do you handle that? Yeah. The illustrations for children are so important, right? To accompany. Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. So, um, so uh, just to tell you uh, like a little anecdote, actually for a while, I actually started to take art lessons in the, um, in the hope that I'm going to be able to illustrate my own books. And I, um, ended up getting into oil painting, which I am a oil portrait painter now, but I still cannot illustrate for myself. So, um, so I, uh, it's really a mixed thing, a mixed um, approach uh, where I would uh, kind of initially uh, um, talk to them about what I, what I imagine the book um, to be like and some, um, you know, cultural aspects um, that need to be observed. Um, and then I really let them do what they can uh, or what they want. And then I kind of fine tune uh, some of the things, but I do give them as much leeway uh, just because I think, you know, the less I interfere, the more likely to have a, you know, an authentic and original um, um, product. So yeah, I, I let them first come up with what they think. And I sometimes might have to adjust a few things again to make it culturally appropriate, to make it, uh, to, to, um, uh, to emphasize a certain point that I think is important in the book um, that you know was critical for me when I dreamed up the plot. Uh, but otherwise I, I really give them a lot of, of um, uh, of leeway, and I have been really very blessed to to work with artists who uh, it's just been a pleasure to work with them. They're, they they um, they have their own ideas. They advise me. They sometimes tell me, "Uh, uh this is not gonna work like um, like you want it. Uh, it has to be adjusted a different way." Uh, but then they're open for for suggestions and open for making the book. Uh, have the spirit that um, I intended it to be. That's really wonderful. I, I, I love that. Um, thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing uh, your books with us and thank you for sharing um, the information with us. I think it's really been very helpful. Uh, there are a lot of parents actually in this audience that I'm noticing. So I think we all, as a parent myself, I think I, I benefited quite a bit from this session. So thank you for that. Um, everyone, uh, again, I put her website in the chat, palestinepublishing.com. We were just talking the other day in another session about the importance of 
um, Palestinians or Palestinian American writers taking charge of their own publishing because I think sometimes the mainstream publishers um, don't understand what we need and what um, our our readers need. So I love that um, there's a, a Palestine publishing company. This is really terrific. Um, and so uh, you can use, she's offered us a discount, everyone, Palestine Writes. You can get a 40% discount at that website. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for being here. We really appreciate your, your time at the conference. It's really a, been a wonderful addition to the program. Thank you all very much. And thank you for, for all the effort to, for putting this together. I think this is tremendous, like we've talked before. I feel very privileged to be here. I hope uh, there'll be more Palestinian uh, writers and illustrators. If there are any Palestinian illustrators uh, out there um, who are interested, I have some scripts awaiting uh, illustrators. Uh, contact me through the Palestine Publishing website. Uh, but thanks again, Palestine Writes. You are wonderful. It's been such a pleasure to be part of this and also to watch the other activities. It's been tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. you. Hopefully we'll see you next year, inshallah. That would be great. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you everybody for joining us. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.